Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Chassidus in the Morning, 15 Minutes to Change Our Lives. A very, very uh, packed shoe. Very exciting. So, we are uh, in the middle of discussing the difference between Chometz and Matzah. And we said those two differences. One is, of course, Chometz grows. Um, yeah, Sh- uh, one second. Shaniro. Can you pass me the, the sourdough container? The chametz grows. We're going to bring in a demonstration today. Chametz grows, whereas matzah is lechem oini. It's poor man's bread. It stays, it doesn't rise. And another difference is in the letters that chametz is with a ches and matzah is with a hay. No, 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 for the sourdough. Matzah is with a hay. Mitzvah Shem, very soon we're going to bring in uh, some demonstration, but to look at the, the ches and the hay, because this is going to be discuss- an important discussion for today. So we see the, the ches. Ches has closed. Is it, um, yeah, perfect. Put it on. Ches is closed from all sides has the bottom, and hay is also closed from all sides in the bottom, but it has this opening over here. This little opening. And this opening is going to be a very important part. And uh, I wanted to show you, so this is chametz. You have, this is flour and water, just let to, to ferment. Started off at this size and it rises and rises and it goes very high. That is chametz. Whereas matzah, as we all know, stays very small. It doesn't, it doesn't have rise. So now we're saying, what is the, the rising of the chametz, of, of, of the bread? That's that's isnasus, that's ego. Whereas the bit of matzah, and also we're going to see how it works out with the <coughs> with the hay, is, is bitl. Like we said yesterday, bitl is, is meaning bringing God in, whereas the ego is edging God out. And and, and realizing, not that I'm a nobody, bitl is not that I'm nobody, it's that I'm nothing else but Hashem. I'm a part of Hashem. I have an official kiss and I connect with that and I try to do whatever I can to connect with that and I have purpose and I have meaning. My purpose and meaning is not a self-serving purpose and meaning. That's an of Bahamas. I have a purpose and meaning in the greatest scheme of the world. Why should put me here and to make this world a dwelling place for Hashem and bring Mashiach and this is my tafkid. So this also crosses up in marriage. Two, two ways to approach marriage. A good way and a not good way. But by nature, we have this ches, the chametz. By nature, um, we we expand. It's all about ourselves, and and a negative way of it is looking. What's this in it for me? And this is, could be in, not just in marriage, but it's in all relationships. An unhealthy type of relationship is what am I gaining from it? Well, what is it for me? Where a healthy relationship is, it's about coming together and and, and coming to a better place. So we're going to discuss a little bit. Okay. Um. So we're in the middle of discussing the letters. So he says, um, The opening in the bottom of the two letters, so what does that mean? That you have like a sins, that you're crouching. You have a covering from all sides, which is the ches. What does that mean? Ain mark the tia mila pesach um khatas revets. So basically the hay, because the hay has this has this uh, opening, it's basically a way out. You make a mistake, you have a way out. Where the ches is no way out. You're stuck. The only way out is all the way back down. Pasavala Maila, but it's hey, mashma usa hu omnom bematzov shell in the pesach a khatas revets. Basically, Ches and Hey have this, this aspect that it's, it's tough and you're not doing good, and you have this bottom, like you have to go all the way down. But the Hey, sorry, the Hey, the Hey has this, like a, um, uh, what's it called, like a little shortcut to get out of it. Which is, it's about doing tshuva. So by hey, you can do tshuva, and the tshuva gets you out, and you can sneak out, and you don't have to get stuck in that situation, meaning the situation will get stuck. 
when you have the yeshot, the ego, you have the chas, you have nowhere to go. Whereas when you go with a hey, you have a place to go. You can sneak out. You do tshuva. Now, even though this is only a small gap, it's not a big opening. It's only a small opening. But Amrazal, the rabbi said, open for me the eye of a needle, meaning put in that little, little bit. And this is such a fundamental idea. Through that, I'm going to open to you like the opening of the ulam. There's these huge doors in the base of Megdash. And, and what and what Hashem is saying, that you put in the minimalist, minimalist amount of effort. And, and I'll, I'll help you exponentially. And that's the idea of tshuva. And that's the idea. And this is the the, the, the hay, the matzah, the bittel. Why, why is this bittel? We're gonna we'll, we'll finish off the thing and then we'll discuss it. Through the arousal, through the some this feeling. Hey, I should do tshuva. You can transform in one moment. May rasha gomer la tzadik gomer from a rasha to a tzadik. What we're saying is the the beauty of bittel is that you can when you have yeshus. So what happens? We make a mistake. You can't run up to it, but you have yeshus. Yeshus is, 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 it puts you in this bad situation, so you can't run up to your mistakes. So let's say in, in terms of a relationship, a husband and wife, you make a mistake, so if someone calls you out on it, so what do you, what happens with yeshus? Yeshus, you say, you think you're that good, what about you? Where did I see it? Uh, yeah, I was learning chasen classes, and it says in the Gemara, I think it was a Yeruvin, that, that if you come and tell a person that he has a, he has uh, like a small, like a matchstick between their eyes, meaning something faulty. They'll say to you, you have a beam between your eyes. You, you tell me I have a problem. You, huh? Look at you. So that's when it comes from Yeshus. You have this stress. It's, it's closed up. There's no way to get out. And, and, and so, so Yeshus gets in the way. And so someone tells you something. <laughs> you can't take it. You can't listen to it. You can't intake it. You say, hey, hey, maybe they're trying to make my life better. But you argue it out and you push yourself away and, and, and the yesh gets in the way and it expands itself. When you have the bittle, you have the, the hay. But as you have the bittle, so even when you make a mistake, okay, I make a mistake. But I can just like, uh, just I can do tshuva. And, and, and yeah, I'm not perfect. It's fine. Like someone tells you something. Yeah, could be very true. And, and, this, is, and this is what we're saying that the hay, <coughs> this is the bittle. And like it says, and this is a very important understanding. When we talk about doing anything, you know, like uh, I heard this guy, he, 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 this is like his bark that he all says a lot. It's, uh, he says in regards to fundraising, but it applies to everything. He goes, the best place to start is start. Meaning, meaning what we're saying is, you're going to say, I have to do tshuva. Like it's so hard because I'm so far away. I've done so many bad things. And then like me, and then we have all these thoughts why it doesn't work. The trick is, just have to do the eye of a needle, the minimalist amount. You do, not you know how hard it is unless you know what you're doing to put the little string into the into the needle. So difficult, so small, to do that minimal amount that it's a joke. What are you doing right? It's nothing. It's, it's I have a needle, so so minuscule. Do that, and the rest, and and Hashem will take care of the rest. And so too, that's with the tshuva. You put in that effort. You say tshuva me, yeah. Do a little bit, whatever it is, the littlest of steps. It can be embarrassing that you can't even share with anyone, but do it. And that will that will expen- grow exponentially. And this is also in marriage. Put in the little of us, a little bit of effort, even the littlest amount, and it'll have exponential benefits. But it comes, but this only comes with a hay, with a matzah, with a bittel. You come with a chess, you can't do that. I'm just saying, even when you do a mistake, yeah, I make mistakes. I'm a human being. It's a very healthy thing to realize. And so therefore, so yeah, I could have done something wrong. Yeah, you're right. Let me let me fix it. And that's what we're saying here. I think it's such a very important message. But when you come with that, when you come into the marriage, realizing that I'm faulty and I have mistakes, I'm just a human being. So then it's not a big deal. And then and therefore, together with that, you don't look at other people's faults. Sometimes we you know we get caught up looking at other people's issues when we realize that that I have plenty of work on myself. So I have no need to to look at anyone else's problems. Zayin. And these two differences, 
between the ches and the, and the hay and the, the, and the matzah with the ego, I mean, the matzah with the bitzel and the chomets with the ego. Tulin says, it's all dependent. When a person is in a way a murder of his battles, of nullification, of giving himself over, of a person realizing that I'm here to help and, and it's not about what I'm gaining, but what I'm giving. Therefore, even if you do something wrong, you do a sin, you do an avera, you can immediately do tshuva. Such a beautiful idea. Meaning, meaning, it's like the famous story. We'll finish the paragraph. When, when it's all ego and and it's, and it's um, it's nasus and like uh, making ourselves big, so then I can't do tshuva. Meaning, there's a famous story that I've heard of different versions, but basically, there's a, a, someone carrying those two I use that version two uh, a teacher, a rabbi, and his student that were walking and had to cross the river. And there was an old lady trying to cross. So the, the the rabbi, he helped her and he picked her up, how he got her, and he helped her go across, put her back down, and he well, she said, thank you very much. And they kept on walking. So as they're walking, they're walking after like two miles of walking. The the teacher, the, the student says to his rabbi, he's like, Rabbi, how, how'd you do that? Like, like uh, you know, show me the girl. So the rabbi said, You're right. He goes, but I put it down, and you're still carrying her. Meaning, meaning, when it comes to tshuva, when you come from the right mindset, when you have the bittle, so even though you're making a mistake, we're not perfect, but when you make the mistake, you can quickly, you know, when you come to a good marriage and healthy marriage, when, when you get called out for a mistake that you did, of course, when you're getting called out, it's coming from a nice place, but if someone tells you, hey, you know, I asked you yesterday to do this, and, and you didn't do it. So if you have bittle, you say, ah, oh, you know, you're right, I, so, I'm really sorry. I should have done that. Let me go do it right now. Thank you for pointing out for me. I really appreciate it. And that's healthy. And that's beautiful. But when you come with the yeshus, you can't do that. So then you come and you say, oh, you know, you justified. Oh, I was busy. You know what I'm doing over here? I'm working so hard. What are you doing? And that that's uh, the rest of the people that are disaster in the marriage. And so too, he was saying, with comes serving Hashem. When we serve Hashem... So you do so you make a mistake, you're doing a video, you're, you're able to see it and you're able to, to fix it. You say, you know, Shem, I'm really sorry, I should have done that, and I and I should walk in. I'm gonna walk in it. Beautiful. Whereas when it comes with the Yeshus, so you don't even think about it. Uh and the Yeshus can express them so many ways. It can be I don't think about it, I don't even notice it. Or we just say, you know, you understand my life is so hard. Like, that's it. This is what it is, what it is what it is. You know, I could do a lot worse. And, and you come with a lot of negative energy. Yeah. So when your person is battle, Mishtad lets dick at me. Ain't Mishtad lets dick at me. When you battle, when you have the battle, so then you put in the effort, you don't put in the effort to, to justify your actions. And then, and then you do a proper accounting. You say, hey, that was wrong. Shouldn't have done that. You know, in, in between you and Hashem, and together the same idea can apply between a, mar- a marriage. And when he realizes what he's doing, he's not the proper shavu tshuva, you do tshuva. In contrast, when you have gaiva, when you have, when you're haughty, mighty Adam, Cheshbain is not a dick, he's not a good Then they justify, then they're looking at ways to, to justify our actions. And and it's a shame. And this is the point. Uh, Betel is not that I'm a nobody and I'm a nebach and I get trampled on. Betel is that, is that, is that I'm comfortable within myself. I don't need to justify myself. I don't need to like constantly battle myself. I don't need to assert myself. I'm comfortable. Whereas Yeshus is I'm uncomfortable myself. And therefore, when I do something wrong, I can't own up to it. Because Yeshus is so you could say another way, Yeshus is superficial, is bitl is is panemius, is is deep. When you have bitl, you're connected with yourself. I'm I'm essentially good. Ah, there's something wrong. Yeah, it's not really me. That's that's this this is Yetahara. I need to get rid of that and go back to my 
my my action where I hold is good, whereas the yeshus is the exact opposite. I'm only as good as my actions. So if I so, so therefore, I can't do anything wrong. But if I do something wrong, that means I'm wrong. All I am is, is some total of my actions. Whereas bittul is all I am is godliness. So therefore, I just need to go back to that state. There's so much more, and to be continuous Hashem tomorrow. Have a great day, and yeah.